My purpose in life is to be all the things an individual can be and to show women and girls that you can be powerful, you can be beautiful, you can be selective, you can be respectful, you can be humble, you can be everything you want to be, but you've got to be clever. Erskine has become an ardent advocate for the sustainable development goals, girls' education and women in leadership. Since 1998, when she began her broadcast journalism career as a lifestyle on-air personality, Anita has now added strategic communications in telecommunications, food processing and non-governmental organisations to her portfolio. Consequently, solidifying her reputation as one of the most versatile communication professions from West Africa. Born in Jerusalem uh, because my parents worked there, you know. Okay. But it's always, always really exciting and exotic to have it on your in, in your past. Yes. <laughs> um, but I would say that uh, my formative years were really here in Ghana. I grew up in Ghana. I went to primary school, secondary school in Ghana. Right. I became Anita Erskine in Ghana. Yes. Um, I'm three hundred percent Ghanaian, and um, I would say my life, um, my life, my passions, my work are deeply rooted in Ghana. This is this is the land that really bore the brand yes. that you so eloquently um, introduced. Um, I love the fact that you've been able to sustain a 20-year career, mm. approximately, mm. Um, even though you're only 30. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been able to sustain a 20-year career. Uh -huh. And I mean, I know that especially coming from a very traditional African household, um, as you said, your formative years were spent predominantly in Ghana. Mm. At the time when you started the, your media career, that was not a prominent or obvious profession for a young, very beautiful woman to enter into. Um, what did your parents want you to become? And how did those conversations go about? Because as an African, I know they're quite challenging. I interesting question, but I think my, what the answer is what my parents didn't say you know right. they didn't say by all means our daughter go ahead you want to do television ah, quite, quite, yeah. no but what they did do is ask me a few times if i was sure ask me a few times if i had done my research ask me a few times how i knew that this is what i wanted to be um i can't say that i gave them the answers that convinced them i can only say that from a very young age they understood my passion for reading for writing for singing mm -hmm. my my wholesome wholesome passion for the stage and for that limelight I and mean, they understood it yeah um and what they did do was consistently encourage me to take advantage of opportunities from mm. church to school you know advantage you know opportunities that allowed me to hold that microphone and be you, be their child and their yeah. child was very outgoing mm -hmm. you see and that eventually kind of molded itself into what i became or have become in front of the camera I actually love what you've become in front of the camera. One of my favorite things when I watch you, especially when you're hosting, is you have a very big stage presence. You really dominate that stage and you bring everyone along for that journey with you. Now, in terms of your diverse career in media and communications, what, where did it begin? Because you spoke about, you know, standing on stage in church, yeah. um, school plays, mm -hmm. but where was the real spark that made you feel like, I can not only do this, but I can actually build a, a force to be reckoned with? I think that probably came when I was in, you know, mid thirties, because after all, what do you know when you're 20 mm -hmm. or 21? Mm -hmm. um, you do what your heart beats for. Yeah. Um, if by God's grace, you happen to have the kinds of opportunities that can take you into one room or another, when you get into that room, the kind of support you get, the kind of, you know, applause you get, the kind of audience you're facing is what really encourages you, you know, to do more. Yeah. Um, only mid thirties, perhaps, you know, I'd had my daughter, and I think it was about this, my daughter was about seven. And I asked myself, you know, who really are you? Because when you were younger, you did what you had to do because you loved it. Yes. Now that you're older, how about doing something because this is who you were created to be? So mid thirties is when I started asking myself, where do you want to be? What do you want your voice to mean? Yeah. Uh, what kind of work do you want to do? And I'm not just talking about the work that you apply your talents to, 
but the work that makes a difference, the mm -hmm. kind of work that makes impact. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if you're sitting in front of the camera, it's not enough for peace or anybody else to say, oh, you're so good in front of the camera. You're so fantastic on radio. You're so great on the stage. Yeah. It is for somebody to say, you know, when you came on stage, when I saw that show, when I listened to you, yeah. something in my life changed. Yeah. So at 35, I realized that, wow, it's not just about me wanting to be here. It's me wanting to use what it is that I'm doing here to change my world. Beautiful. And that's the real career direction I had always been looking for. I find that amazing because when I look at your career trajectory, mm -hmm. there are so many key impactful events, situations, um, causes that you've aligned yourself with. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably really hard for you to choose one particular, but if you had to kind of focus on a true highlight in your mm -hmm. career in the media and communication space, what would you say it would be? Um, Ironically, not necessarily something related to the media, but something that I used the media for. Mm -hmm. um, when I started using my platform to talk about empowerment, to talk about girls and school, and had the very unique and wonderful opportunity to do this in collaboration with, you know, a couple of big, big networks, is when I, you know, peace, it's almost like discovering that you do have an interesting texture to your voice. And that texture not being about how it sounds or mm -hmm. how soft it is, but it's about how many people you're getting to believe in your mission, how mm -hmm. many people you are getting to tag along um, with the revolution. For me, that was it. That is that moment. It doesn't have, there's no specific day or time. There's a moment yeah. in which I discovered wow, this is what my voice can do. Yeah. So let's get on with it. Let me use my voice for this. Let me use my radio shows for this. Let me use my TV shows for this. Let me use my, my, my you know, everything for this. And let me change people's perceptions of girls and education and people's perceptions of women in leadership. Yes. Anita, can you do this? All the while, you know, latching onto your passion for TV, all the while, you know, latching onto your career. Yes, you can. And that, that would have been the moment for me. I think yes you can and yes you have and when I look at the journey that you've taken I mean I love that you started off with this passion for media and your voice mm -hmm. but you also in the process of falling in love with your voice started using it for change and I always align you with women and youth because I know those are the two especially women you fight the cause like you know you're there um, and I love seeing that but in terms of those two demographics mm -hmm. what really pulls you to start your mission to help women to help you amplify their, their voices and change really their status quo within society um, an experience in my life um, a very wonderful experience I had you know traveled to the north I traveled to Tamale specifically working on a production for discovery communications and the, dis the you know the, the whole essence of the production was to get people to understand that putting girls through school is cool um, nobody prepared me for how those real stories of resilience, I mean, these 10-year-old girls, these 11-year-old girls, 12-year-old girls, having mature conversations with you about their dreams and aspirations, but then finishing the conversation off with a, with, you know, with a simple shrug of a shoulder saying, well, yeah, but that's just going to be a dream. Yeah. That's all it's ever going to be, just a dream. And they kind of walking away with the confidence that it's just going to be a dream. It's not going to happen. It woke me up mm. in a way that the classroom could never wake me up. In a way that even conversations with like-minded females, women like you, Peace, couldn't wake me up. Mm -hmm. Hearing the stories from the grassroots themselves and hearing how they could benefit if somebody could just have just a little bit of confidence and patience in them, mm -hmm. or a little bit of confidence in them and a little bit of patience to, to help nurture them. Yeah. That, for me, was my aha moment. It was for me, you know, I, I suddenly woke up and I said, these two demographics, I've heard someone say, it's not about the voice they don't have, it's about being able to help them amplify their voices. Yes. And for me, I said at the time, I can't walk away, I can't hop on my flight back to Accra and say, well, yeah, so I came and shot an episode and there I'm gone, yeah, okay, all right, see you next time. Yeah. I couldn't do that piece. I couldn't, for the life of me, go to bed knowing that it, so if I can change one person's life, what would it mean for not that person alone, but the people in her community? Mm -hmm. So that's when I started, you know, that's when my mission really began. Don't just talk the talk. Don't just walk the walk. Be the talk. Be the walk. Mm -hmm. And let other people know that if they walk aside you, 
if they walk along, along with you, if they talk along with you, they'll be greater as well. So for me, that was it. Knowing that these girls know that they are powerful, but there's just that tiny thing missing, and that tiny thing is help, God help me. To but be that your actually, that solution has grown into a, quite a, a movement. Um, I know that I, th I think it was about two years ago you launched um, WEF, yes. um, and I, I saw one of the recipients, you know, receiving her her check, her check. that would change her life. Talk yeah. to me more about that. The Women's Elevation Fund was birthed out of the story I've just told you mm. about being able to speak to these young girls and have them school me on what kind of world is ideal, mm -hmm. not just for them, but for all of us. Um, and when I established the Women's Elevation Fund, I mean, I was doing, a, I had just been signed on as a brand ambassador for Vlisco, and I was asked very openly, so what do you want to use this money for? You know, we, we, we want to support one of your, you know, one of your um, initiatives. initiatives. Which one do you want? And I said, I want to put all of that money towards school for this particular person. Amazing. Nobody asked if I was sure because I think everyone was convinced I was sure. Of course. And so they were convinced <laughs> giving me that kind of support yeah. would take things a long way. And th that was it. That birthed the Women's Elevation Fund. We've been able to um, help 10 girls thus far with their education. And they're all in post-secondary institutions across the country with a specific focus on helping them become film directors, um, broadcast journalists, public relations officers. I don't want to cry right now, but it's just an unbelievable <laughs> piece. When you see these girls, some graduating and some just getting all A's in their courses. And it's all, you know, apart from that seed money, it's all been self-funded. Mm -hmm. It's all me. I hop on stage today, I collect my check, I slash it in half. There you go, girls. Um, it soon became not about me being able to dip my hand in my pocket to help. Nor is it about me boasting about my success with them. Mm -hmm. It soon became about me getting more women, more like-minded women to say, we can make the change. Yep. Let's please listen to our marginalized girls mm -hmm. and sisters and women, because they are the change we're looking for. Precisely. So that's what the Women's Elevation Fund has done and continues to do. I love that we're talking about the impact that you've made in all these women's life, but mm. I think there's a silent group of women that you're not aware of how much you've influenced them mm. through just being unapologetically yourself. I mean, when you started building your media career, we had no specific person um, in the media and communication space that we could say, hey, look at that lady. And I think that you've, you've been relentless in the pursuit of breaking your own boundaries and creating a lot of fir several firsts as an African woman in the process. Um, now, in terms of the mark that you've made in the media industry, what would you say the future holds for you? Because there's so many of us that are, you know, we're there following your footsteps and loving everything that you're doing. But this is not the end. We can tell that the boss lady has a lot more in store. <laughs> so talk to me about your future aspirations. Um, peace. The future is the next minute. You know, not, I'm not trying to be theatrical or poetic about it. It's mm -hmm. the reality. You know what I mean? The future is the next opportunity. This year alone, if there's anything you can take away from 2020 is that the coronavirus has taught you that from the, the confinement of your living room, you can create an entire business. Indeed. You know what I mean? Um, I proudly say in January, my dear, I had a wall filled with all the countries I was going to travel to, all the projects I was going to do. Come March, I'm like, okay, cross this out, cross this out. The future has now become, for me, a need to be more versatile. Yeah. A need to be a little bit more open-minded with business ideas. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of entrepreneurship work right now yeah. um, with the Jack Ma Foundation, with mm -hmm. the United Nations, mm -hmm. um, with the Sustainable Development Goals. And I found that my future really is embedded in using my skill set in pushing social impact.
I mean, I think that your, your journey, especially in the recent years, has been an extreme testament to that statement. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, many of us know and love you as, you know, host, journalist, yeah. etc. But you've taken a huge pivot into acting. <laughs> uh, and you've done exceptionally well at it, from my personal, from my humble opinion as a consumer. I'm, I, I, I don't judge the Oscars, but I think, I think you're, you're brilliant at it. Um, it takes though a bold move to redefine yourself. 20 years is not, it's not a small number of years. That redefinition, the acting choice, um, what was really the idea behind it? And is there a strategy in this? When God blesses you, you have no right to dumb down your power Beautiful. or to dim your light. Mm -hmm. You have no right. And regardless of what people say you should do and what people's expectations of you are, and sometimes people's expectations of you is that you, you know, go small, small, relax, yeah. <laughs> go slow. But I will say here today, peace, probably the first time I will say it with, with my tongue and my mouth, I am so blessed. I'm blessed that I do everything that I do naturally. Never studied broadcast journalism, never studied, you know, what the camera can do, never studied any of it. But humongously blessed when God said, you, I'll give you this, use it wisely. So moving into film for me was not, should I do it? No. Yeah. By the time, you know, Shirley from, if from Pomanto called and by the time, you know, XYZ people called, I was ready um. because again, Peace, and you say so beautifully, oh, you know what, there's a silent group of women looking. And I want to show these women that, listen, nobody can tell you you are too much. Beautiful. Push and do it till you yourself say, okay, it's too much, I need to relax. But when you've got it, use it. When you're blessed with it, please do not insult your maker yeah. by saying, oh, it's a bit too much, oh, I'll do this later, oh, I'll do this. Truth be told, you can't do everything at the same time. But you best use that talent. And for me, that's what film is now. Using the talent that I know sits within me and making sure that, God forbid, <laughs> I don't go to my grave without at least tapping into what God has given me. Beautiful. And that's all it is. You say strategy, I say blessings. You know I what I mean? It. Just take advantage <laughs> of the blessings. Mm -hmm. There was never a time when I put a pen to a paper and said, okay, in 2021, I shall be in this, <laughs> in this film. But when yeah. the moment came and when the phone call came, because I had been asking God to open doors, to lay my feet in, in corridors of power, mm -hmm. to move me and give me direction. When the call came, I said, ah, oh, that must be one of the directions you want me to take. Just yeah. bless it as I explore it. And I've been surrounded by people. I mean, I mentioned Shirley. I mean, one of the major conversations Shirley and I had, even though privately, but I had to say this publicly because I think women have to learn, is why do you always pretend you are not good enough? Mm. Why? To make somebody feel comfortable? Yeah. Stop that. It's not attractive. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you knew Shirley, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, why, why do you always pretend like, yeah, you are nobody, you are humble? Yeah. Is it so that the next person won't feel that, oh, hey, the boss lady is here? But if you are the boss lady, yes, I'm not saying be over pompous about it. But show people why you're so blessed, so that the next person who is just as blessed or even more blessed than you knows it's okay to be flamboyant mm -hmm. and it's okay to be powerful. And my dear, that's you say strategy, I say blessings. That's the <laughs> end. <laughs> I love it. I think when God does move for you, it, it almost looks so flawless. Yeah. You would think there was a mastermind behind it, but he is right. really, truly the mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that you said blessed. I love the fact that you said you're ruthlessly following and unapologetically owning and taking up space. What would you say your purpose in life is? My purpose in life is to be all the things an individual can be and to show women and girls that you can be powerful, you can be beautiful, you can be selective, you can be respectful, mm -hmm. you can be humble, you can be everything mm -hmm. you want to be, but you've got to be clever. That's mm. my purpose, to teach people that you've got to be clever with your who and your how. Yeah. I don't have friends as many friends as I should put, perhaps. I've got three, four good friends. I don't go every single where I can, yeah. you know. 
I'm selective not because I think I'm better than somebody, no, but I'm selective because peace in, in 18 hours, I've got to decide what's the most important. Yes. And what, what's the most important may not necessarily be a drink here or a coffee here. It might be time spent with my family. It yeah. might be time spent with my, with my aging parents. Or it might be just time spent with my, my, my fellow broadcast journalist. Um, my purpose really is to show you that nobody can stop you. Peace, you said 20 years, and I thank God for the last 20 years. But if you had said to me, Anita, in your 21st year of officially working in television, you would have received a call from a major brand saying, we want you to be at the forefront of a film or a TV show or, or a soap opera. I would have said, hey, peace, this one, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> this one, you're, please, girl, wherever you head, this is not true. But evolution happened to me. Mm. And when evolution happened, God also smiled and said, I told you, you can be everything, but please don't keep this greatness for yourself. Mm -hmm. Please do show the next generation of women who are going to be greater than you, by the way, that they can do it. And that is my purpose. Amazing. I remember when um, I joined the media community mm -hmm. in um, Ghana, mm -hmm. um, I, was, I mentioned to you before the interview, I was watching a lot of your interviews. Mm -hmm. And I remember you talking about, you know, you kind of, going from behind the camera to exploding in front of the camera in Ghana. And just at your height is when you got married, you had children, and it was like a wipeout. And then you were now starting to yeah. rebuild and put the bricks in place. And you've done an exemplary job of really emerging back into your full grace. Um, but then there's a notion as women that they always ask, you know, can you have it all? Can you be a wife well? Can you be a mother well? Can you be a career woman well? And I love that you were mentioning about prioritizing and juggling all of that. But what would be your answer to that question? Can you really have it all? If you find the man of your dreams, marry him. Oh, wow. If you feel like your ovaries are tickling and they want a child, have a child. If you feel like you want to wear a pencil skirt suit to walk into that boardroom surrounded by men at the table, walk into that room. If you feel like you want to grow your hair all natural and stop wearing weaves, grow your hair. Mm -hmm. If you feel like all you want to do is wear weaves, please do wear your weaves. Listen, should I continue? Just to let you know that peace, there is no rule in any book that mm -hmm. says you can't be all of these five things and more. Yes. The only rule is the one in your heart. I love that. The one that says, ooh, I think that if I tried this, I would fail. Ooh, I think that if I explored this, I would be shut out. Ooh, I think that if I had this child, I would lose popularity. It's the rules that you're making in your heart. Because I feel that every single woman who's able to break one particular ceiling or another is exemplary. She's an example of what is possible. I'm not going to lie to you and say that, oh, you know what, but it's so easy. All I do have to do is wake up, snap my finger. No, it is work. Mm -hmm. But when you work, you know, at the, when you're at the top of your game in television, in, 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 um, in government, in, in, in business, it is work. When you are home at the top of your game as a mom, as, as a wife, it is work. Everything is work and everything is effort. So it's entirely up to you. Where do you want to align your effort? And which, and which rule do you want to abide by? The one that is kind of made in, in, in some kind of ecosystem and some kind of universe that says you can't have it all? Mm -hmm. Or the one in your heart that says, no, I know I'll be a good wife. Mm -hmm. I know I'll be a great mom. And I know I'll be a fantastic business leader. Go for that one that's in your heart. I don't have a right to say to any woman, no, 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 no. If you do this, hmm. if you have this child, no. My biggest legacy are my children. I mean, there's so many lessons in this um, conversation, mm. but I really would like an official message to the federation yeah. that are behind you. I mean, there's so <laughs> the many, there's mm. so many people that have watched your journey. They've watched you go from the heights yeah. to you going quiet, to you yeah. coming back, mm -hmm. um, to you evolving in front of their eyes, to you yeah. changing different um, advocacies by lending your voice to it and creating an impact. But what would be your advice to the young girl at home that's seeing you on TV now, seeing you do these amazing conferences mm -hmm. and initiatives? and say, I think I can do that, what would be your advice to her? Understand what your pace is. Everybody has a pace. And that pace includes many things. Education is one of them. 
um, inspiration or being inspired by other people is one of them, being motivated by other people is one of them. Um, understanding what your mental faculty is. You know, where are you? What kind of thick skin or thin skin do you have? Um, what kind of time and commitment? What are your, what, what are your commitment thresholds? Mm. Can, you, can you take the pressure or do you just want to go gradually so that you don't have to succumb to enormous pressure? Don't want to be like me because of what it appears that I have. Be who you are, but understand your pace. Understand when it's time to go to school. Mm -hmm. Understand when it's time to go to work. Mm -hmm. And not in its physical sense, but in its emotional commitment. Understand when you want to further your education. Understand if you want to pursue law, or if you want to pursue medicine, or if you want to pursue broadcast journalism. Every girl needs to understand that she has the power to determine what her pace is. And every girl needs to understand that she can take things one step at a time. There's no race. Yeah. There is no race in life. And don't ever feel that you need to endorse that notion that says, oh, this person is doing better than you. Oh, this person has got this. No, there is a personal pace. Mm -hmm. And when you go according to your pace and you tap into your personal calling, mm -hmm. that's when evolution hits you in the most beautiful way. So I've done what I do for 20 years. Um, I'm going into acting and this will be my first year in acting, so there are dues to pay there. Mm -hmm. And I've done what I've done in corporate communications. I'm doing what I'm doing in social impact. So if you look at everything, although yes, I didn't plan it all, and although it's happening by God's grace, there's also a pace. Understand your pace and be proud of it. Sometimes you are the forefront, sometimes you are the back. When you go to the back and somebody else is ahead of you, celebrate the person. You know what I'm saying, peace, let's learn to just say, Peace is on TV. Even, with, even if at that point in time, I'm not on TV because one of mine is, is on TV. Mm -hmm. One of mine is ahead. What that means is when Peace gets there, that door that Peace walked through, she's going to hold it open for me. Precisely. And that is where my celebration for, for your, you know, the pieces of the world, etc., comes from. And I need my girls to understand. Understand your pace. And understand that celebrating other people should be part of your DNA. Because mm -hmm. that is ultimately what makes you the boss lady, the ability to celebrate the next person is what makes you a true boss lady. Love it. Thank you so much for your time. You've been absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, Peace. In 2020, she joined the African Net Penal Prize Initiative, Jack Ma's foundation flagship philanthropic entrepreneur program for African entrepreneurs as host and advisor. Anita has lent her voice and personality to numerous social impact projects due to her unwavering belief in the Sustainable Development Goals mantra of not leaving anyone behind, a mission she continues to fight even to this day against all odds. The future is the next minute. The future is the next opportunity. The coronavirus has taught you that from the confinement of your living room, you can create an entire business.